Here, let's try curvy angular pry bar. It'll give you some good leverage on this. Yep. There we go, let it ride. Hello? Boop. Boop. Hello? Hi, I'm calling from the Death Relief Enrollment Center. You're speaking with Sabrina. How are you doing today? Uh, what's that do? I am calling you, 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 you in regards to your pre-approval. Uh, what's that do? For financial help. Like Dave Ramsey? I am calling you. Uh, what's that do? You're hearing me? You're hearing me? We are running a nationwide campaign to help people. You're going to pay half of my loans? Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back to this Lexus 2008 RX 400H for hybrid model. We have a pile of parts on the floor and all of this is just plastic accessory, engine manifold, intake manifold, uh, some emission stuff, wiper cowl, wiper transmission, wiper motors, etc, etc, blah blah blah. And this is as far as we got. We got the rear valve cover gasket replaced. It was leaking oil. We're gonna do the front valve cover gasket later. Once that's off and done, we're gonna take all this stuff off over here, pull the timing covers out, and I'm gonna do a timing belt and water pump. So we're giving the, the full Monty treatment to this hybrid internal combustion engine. So stay tuned because this is going to be an excellent part two. If you missed part one, do not worry. Just check the link down inside of this video's description and it will take you back in time. Alrighty, so yesterday we did the grueling, difficult, extremely hard rear valve cover. Now we're gonna do the nice and easy one. There's those broken clips. See that one? I just I touched it and it broke right off. Look at that. Aye, it's a Toyota thing. But anyway, as I was saying, we're moving forward to the easy clip breaking section here. Let's see if I can go for uh, for all of them. As soon as you move it to depress. Yep, snapped right off. Look at that. All three. Live on camera, me breaking customers' vehicles. How about that? So anyway, we got the clips off, and that's no matter. I can fix that with zip ties. That's the way it's done. We'll go ahead and pull the bolts for the, the coils. And like I said, I'm replacing three coils on this. But it's going to be the rear coils because those are hard to get. These ones you can get without taking the intake off, so. We're just gonna put these back later. The theory behind it is, is why spend, or the logic behind it is why spend a bunch of money on coils that haven't failed yet that are easy to replace. So if one goes out, you just pop it in there. Now, like I said, I already did the rear bank. Did that last night when you guys weren't looking. The plugs look decent. I mean, they weren't, they weren't new. They weren't destroyed. But while we're here, we're just gonna get it done. I and mean, you can see, it's not the best. Not horrible, but not the best. And we're upgrading those those plugs to uh, Iridium Long Life plugs. Yep, yeah, same condition. Unclick. go that's three okie dokes I got three new ones I have three new ones let's go ahead and get those down in their home and we'll snug them up That was gone, it's gone. Yeah, it appears that my, my blue towel shim for my extension has failed, so I need to replace it with a new blue towel shim. There. It's just that that happens to be a defective locking extension. It's old, it can be broken. Okay, let us uh, torque these to uh, the precise amount with a highly calibrated and precision instrument. Mm -hmm. It's also good for setting preload. Oh, look at that, see that? Yeah. 
I forget the inch pounds. We'll do, let's do like 80 inch pounds. I like 80 inch pounds. Yeah, right about, yeah, that's good, 80 inch pounds. I should probably stop messing around and actually, yeah, 80. I don't even know if it is 80. But right now I got them torqued to, oh, this one's at 60. Coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. And there's our 80, right? Right there, that's 80 inch pounds, all right. No, but in all seriousness, this, uh, this is not exactly the appropriate tool. So we're actually gonna torque these properly with the correct tool. No worries. And it's it's not 80 inch pounds. I actually looked it up. It, it was, uh, it's 18 foot pounds of torque. So seriously, I've got the proper torque wrench now. Let's do 18 foot pounds of torque, okay? 18 pounds. Yeah, we need way more. More, you say? And 18 pounds. Almost. One more turn out of it here. Let's see. Well, you know, we'll just do, let's just do 20. I like 20. There we go. Here, I had to lengthen my extension. I was running into stuff. Let's get our 20 pounds here. Right about, oh, you guys lost it. 20, 18, 20 click. We're there, 20 pounds. Last one coming around, 20 foot pounds of torque. Right about, ooh, yeah, click, good to go. Spark plugs installed, success. Okay, moving on, the holes are plugged up now. Let's get these goodies out of here. Uh, I still have some disassembly to do. We need to remove this little bracket here, that hose, these electrical connectors right here, and then uh, we'll pull the perimeter bolts out for this valve cover and pop this guy off next. Now you can see this upper hose is kind of in the way. I could work around it, but I'm not going to. We're just going to pull this off. The uh, cooling system is already drained, so I shouldn't be spilling a bunch of coolant. But we'll see. We will find out in a moment. Oh, I need a pick, a pick driver. Nice. I'll pop this guy loose right here too. I'm just kind of getting behind it with the screwdriver just to just to break that bond. Mm. It's a strong bond. No matter, we'll escalate. There's always the ability to escalate any situation. Any situation. There we go. Throw that into the pile of parts. A little bit more space here to work with. We've got access to all the bolts, except for one way down there that we can't get to without a wobbly. And these little uh, little studs right here. That's another Torx. Ooh, last time I took some of these off of one of these, they, they immediately broke off. I'm glad these did not. Come out. lay this thing aside over here if it's going to stay there. It's not. So I'll just unplug the injectors. I don't want this thing in my way. These things hurt my fingers to unclip. Come out, you. Come on. Ow. You. Why? Seriously, what is this? There. All right. Put that aside and that's out of the way. Now, 
Uh, I'm going to get the hard bolt first, which is this guy way, way down in that hole down there. You see that one? I can't take the bracket off because the bolts for the bracket are over there on the side really far away. I could take them out, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go in there with a wobbly drive and sneak that guy out. Then it's smooth sailing on the rest of them. This little hose is going to be a problem, so we're just going to sneak this guy out right now. There we go. Now I think I can get in there with my wobbly. Yep. Come on. These are not easily replaceable and they have to go in the valve covers. See how they've got the shank on them that prevents this fastener from applying too much clamping force to the actual cover itself. It will actually bottom out when the threads run out so there's only a certain amount of clamping force that can be provided. So if you got a leaking valve cover you can't just tighten it more and expect it to, uh, to seal or clamp more because it won't. Try to clamp as far as it can clamp. It doesn't have any more clamping. Who me? Yeah, like that. I throw them on the trailer outside and oh. take them to the scrap metal place. They get recycled. I don't need to take that off. Um, you can just put it by the door. Yeah, just set it over there by the door and uh, we can throw it on the trailer later. Just a couple more bolts left. Bing! Rotor's done. E come here, last bolt. Got it! back up some and uh, we'll crack this guy loose. Just checking to make sure I've got all the fasteners. I do. Let's get behind it a little bit. Apply some up. There she comes. Ooh, this one's pretty clean underneath too. This is good. Love a well taken care of engine. Phone's ringing. Ooh, it's a potential spammer. Let's call him. Hello? Boop. Boop. Hello? Hi, I'm calling from the Dead Twinning Enrollment Center. You're speaking with Sabrina. How are you doing today? Who, who are you calling from? The Dead Twinning. Center. Oh, uh, what's that do? Hello? I am calling you in regards to your pre-approval for financial help. Financial help? Like Dave Ramsey? Hello? We are running, a, you're hearing me? We are running a nationwide campaign to help people reduce their outstanding unsecured loans up to 50%. Oh, do you like pay half of the loan? And to help it become lendable again. Oh, there that's no awesome. There is no open fees or hit cost involved. She's in having a hard program. time. Okay, that sounds really nice. So you're, you're going to pay half of my loans? No, nah, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, I guess she wasn't uh, she wasn't down with that. It must be her first day. She didn't sound too confident. Anyway, let's uh, let's keep going here. So there's some silicone uh, 
in a couple key spaces on this cylinder head and that's where there are two pieces of metal that uh, form together and there's gonna be a little seam there. You gotta have a little dab of silicone where that seam is, otherwise oil can wick down that right. seam. It can go down that seam and then leak through it. So what I'm doing is just peeling off that old sealant and we'll scrape that off and then we'll apply new sealant before, uh, before we put that new, uh, new gasket on with the old valve cover. Yeah, there we go, get that out of here, goodbye. We'll give it a wipe down with a towel and I'm gonna go over a little razor blade in a minute and uh, get the rest of this out of here. So stand by, let me prep this surface and then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get the new one back on. Uh, you guys already saw in the last episode uh, how I drove the spark plug tube seals and then put that gasket on the valve cover so we can skip past that part for this video and uh, help save us a little bit of time here. So uh, stand by, I'll be right back. Okie dokes. Like I said, we sped forward a little bit. I've got new seals, spark plug tube seals in the valve cover. The perimeter gasket is on. I have some sealant on all the critical gap areas on this head. So let's uh, sneak this guy back down in. This is gonna be 99% easier than the rear. The screw? Hang on, wife unit needs some help here. She's doing brakes on her van. Hang on. There we go, we're good. I'll be right, be right back. You guys stay here. Okie dokes, bolts coming in. This thing is now seated. As I said, it has the sealant in its uh, correct locations. Let's get these guys on. And we'll run these down real quick like, and then then we can start disassembling some more of this goodness over here because we still have the uh, the timing belt and water pump to replace. That's going to be fun. No, really, it's going to be fun. It's not going to be a problem. It's not going to be difficult. The whole operation is going to move along just swimmingly. There we go. That's that difficult, can't reach it uh, fastener down there. All right, we'll start with the middle ones just to uh, secure this thing overall. There we go. Next, work our way out. The only one I really want to focus on is that hard to reach one up in the corner. That's the one. Come on. It's a very sharp angle for my wobbly. Very sharp. Awkward. There we go, we're getting some traction. Come on. Come tight. Almost. Almost. Oh, kicks. I don't know. <laughs> I can do many things at the same time. I said I can do many things at the same time. It's a superpower. There we go. Right, this thing's nice and tight. Not as tight as a tiger. Tight as it should be. All right, well, I, uh, I do not have my uh, two coils that go in the rear. I'm waiting on two to be delivered, the new ones. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install these coils back here on the front since we're done with this side of the valve cover. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and button up the back so we can get the intake back on, but I don't have parts yet, so I guess we're gonna have to move on and uh, kind of change our, our schedule a little bit here. Let's get this stuff on. All right, that's three. Good to go. A couple 10 mils. Actually, it's three. So that's a few 10 mils. 
so yeah, I can fish this wiring harness back out and we'll put this thing back on. We have no more, uh, no need to have this stuff removed right now. So we're all done with this particular section for the most part. Now let's see here. We need the studs that hang on to uh, this little bracket guy. We've got those right now. Huh? Come on, stud. Screw in. Please. There we go. Nice. Okay, I'm going to try something new to secure these connectors with the broken tabs. I've uh, seen this trick on the interwebs and I kind of want to try it out for myself. So what I'm going to do here is stick a zip tie in that. And I think I did it the wrong way. Hang on, bear with me here. I've never done this before. But I'd like to see if this is going to work. You're supposed to put it together, then run a zip tie in it. And then when the zip tie is fully clamped around that clip, it engages the tab and then secures, uh, secures the fastener. Maybe I need a bigger zip tie. Yep, try again. Take two. That one didn't work. Come here. Okay, trying again with a larger zip tie. I think that other one was just too tiny. So, let's see if this one's gonna work. I don't know if I'm doing this right. But, uh, well, I'm learning. What? Hey, it works. Hang on here, look. Fail. Yeah, we're gonna try this one more time. I tried to fit a big one in there and it doesn't fit, so we need to do this with, uh, with like a little one. I've seen this happen on the internet, but just because it happened on the interwebs doesn't mean it's gonna actually work in real life. And I don't think this is working for me in real life. Yeah, no. No, this is not working out. Okay, one last attempt before I give up and I put some silicone on this. I'm gonna try one more time. It's not working out. Run that through and then we make this tight. This is not going at all the way it did on the TikTok video. I think the internet's a lie. It's not even real. It is of no matter. Okay. Well, that worked. The zip tie clip uh, repair procedure. Well, I guess I'll repeat two more times and we'll see how that works out, but so far so good. I guess the catch is the angle that this little, uh, the zip tie end engages the little tab. And it's gotta be, I guess, the right size zip tie for your whatever type of fastener that is. And it's gotta end up getting super tight so it can't like walk sideways. Okay. But it works, it does work. Yeah, see we used to just stick some silicone on there and then that was that, and then you just reapplied if you ever had to take it off. But this works too. The silicone method was faster. This is much nicer and cleaner though. I think this is gonna be my new method. There we go, all right. Moving on. Doke. So seeing as how I don't have those uh, ignition coils and I can't put them back in for now, and uh, that means I can't put the intake manifold on. Let's just kind of move forward and start disassembling some of this stuff over here so I can get the timing covers off and then uh, ultimately replace that belt and water pump. Okay, so there's a bracket here. Get that off. Loud noises! I lose. Bigger tools. To unclick more torque. Oh, that thing's on there. 
over 50 foot foot pounds. All right, now this right here is fun. You see, I need to pull this bolt out of this torque mount, but I can't because there's a little bracket here for a wiring harness, like exactly in the way. That was, that's fun. I wonder if I just bend it out of the way. I wonder if I can do that. Yeah, actually, that actually worked. I'll just bend it. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll go in here and break it loose, and then we'll sneak a, uh, oh, it's tight too. Just sneak a little driver in there and run the bolt out. Uh -oh. There we go. Okay, we got one more up and over and on the other side of this torque mount. Let's get this guy out of here. And then I'll pull that torque mount and then we'll take the motor mount apart. Here it comes. So what I'll do is I'll put this bolt and the other one in the component. That way I know where they go. Okay, one bolt oh, on the back side of this mount. And another one right in front of us, right here. Okay, let's get this little bracket out of here. Pull the two bolts up and out. Oh, that's cute. Can't get them, I can't get them out. I need to take this reservoir up here off also. Okay, now that all this rigmarole is out of the way, we can go ahead and pull the bolts for this upper timing cover. And uh, that will expose the uh, top side of the belt. So many fasteners that I've removed off this car. It's incredible. Hundreds of them. That's not gonna fit. Mm. A round one. That was my not very good battery. I need to change it. Okay, that's uh, three. We got some more farther back next. Okie dokes, all the bolts are out. Let's get this little cover out of here. All the bolts for the cover are out. That's what I should say. Come here, cover. Um, something's going on with this. Look at that. See those little stripes or whatever in there? It's like it's kind of wet. That's odd. I wonder. I wonder if there is a leak going on with the. That water pump in there. Anyway, well, it definitely needs a, a belt replaced, so uh, let us continue and uh, we'll pull this thing down a little bit farther. Uh, first things first, we need to get this thing up in the air higher. We're going to go down below, pull the crankshaft pulley off, and the lower covers. Then we'll pull this engine mount bracket device right here off of there. And once that is removed, the entire timing system will be exposed. Uh, we can roll the engine over to, D to TDC, words number one. And, uh, and pull the system apart and get it, uh, get the new belt and new water pump replaced. Okay, let's go ahead and raise this up some. We're gonna go in through the passenger side wheel well and we're gonna take the crankshaft pulley off, the lower cover, and uh, then we can start working on pulling that timing system apart. And I think I would like to do this at comfortable chair height. Okay, we're down low. Here's our crank pulley. I've already pulled this plastic cover off. It goes right here. Uneventful, two bolts. Let's see if this thing is gonna give us a problem or if it's gonna be compliant. Nice. Okay, bolt came out. Probably gonna have to use a puller. We've got two holes here to attach a puller, but I'm gonna give it a tug just to see first. Oh, nope. Yeah, we need a puller, okay. The shank on the puller has interchangeable tips and that one is conical shaped, which will meet the flat on the crank. So I can, uh, I can pull straight against the snout of the crankshaft. I really don't like to do that because sometimes you can estimate incorrectly and potentially cause some damage. 
And if we damage the crankshaft, we are, we're in trouble. We're in big time trouble. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Not at all, not at all. Okay, we'll run this guy down. It's gonna meet the crank and then uh, we can begin pulling. It's a little off center. Let's back this one out some. Screw that in, it's gonna contact the crankshaft. Once it makes contact, which it just did, we center it again, and then we'll turn that shaft and it's gonna pull this uh, this balancer pulley off the crankshaft snout. Okay, here we go. Here it comes. Beautiful. There we go. Okay, we have a couple more bolts in there for this cover. Let's zip these guys out. There's one of them. I think that's all. Yep. Yeah, there's some moisture going on in here. Well, what the deal is, I'm fairly certain that uh, that was the noise, but I still think it may have been one of these pulleys. You can see that water pump has been weeping a little bit. See that crusty buildup stuff on the back side of it? We'll get the tensioner out, we'll pull the pulleys off, and then we'll pop that water pump out of there. Okay, so I think we're pretty close to having everything aligned and ready to come apart, but I want to put some marks on everything. See, there's a little, there's a little dot right here. Oh, that was, that was loud. There's a little dot right here, and that little dot is supposed to be the top dead center mark for the crankshaft. Now, I can't see it, it's difficult, so I'm gonna break out the secret weapon here. I've had this stored away in the tool toolbox drawers, words, for decades, and that is my pink nail polish. See that? So what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna mark that little dot right there. There's our pink nail polish mark. So now we know that that lines up with the little dot right there, which I'm also marking on the timing cover, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and put a mark on the dot on the crankshaft pulley, or the gear rather, a little gear right there. And that same mark is gonna line up on the belt, so I'm milking marking the actual marks, I'm marking the gear, and I'm marking the belt where it was touching. And we're gonna go up top and do the exact same thing. That way, we know exactly where this thing goes. So if something goes south and, you know, one of the cams turns or I go home and forget what I was doing, I've got marks to, uh, to remind me and then bring me back. So if we look here on the gear for the, uh, the camshaft, so that right there, there's a little mark in white, well, what I'm gonna do is make a new one in pink. And while I'm there, I'm gonna go ahead and just mark the belt. See that? And way, way out back, there's another mark in there. Let's see if I can't get, uh, get back into that hole there. You guys aren't gonna be able to see, but there's another mark back here, right here on the side. And that's also going to get some pink, and so is the belt. There we go. So now, no matter what, our old belt is referenced, and we can always uh, start over if we get lost, confused, or if something goes south. So while we're up here again, let me just go ahead and remove these bolts for this, uh, or the upper bolts for this little mount uh, cover thing right here. There's a couple more down below, but we'll go down on that side and get those later. Let's pull this one out right here. That one's actually a nut. Same difference. I don't like same difference. Seems to be like a like an antonym type of sentence. You know, when someone says, oh, that's the same difference. Well, I mean, not really. Because if it's the same, 
then it can't be a difference. So you can't have the same difference unless you're two, talking about circumstances that are different, I think. I don't know, that's kind of a, that's a linguistic rabbit hole. And we're off subject, so let's go down below and uh, remove those bottom fasteners. Let's see what we get here. Okay, looking up top, I'm gonna try to squeeze in there. And we're gonna get these last remaining nuts off. And then that mount thing will come out of there. Once that thing's out of the way, we're free to take the belt tensioner loose. And then remove the unit. And there's one of them. And the other one, I can't even see it, it's over here. There it is, off to the right. Very good. Come out. Seriously? Look at that. It hits the body of the truck. Look at that. All right. I guess that one stays in. Are there any more? No? Yes? There's got to be one more somewhere. It's still stuck. All right. Let's go up top and try again. Let's see here. What gives with this one? It felt loose. Oh. Just stubborn. There's some corrosion on that stud. You couldn't see the bright lights. There's corrosion on that stud. That one. And it doesn't want to slide off of it. And I can't get it to come out because that stud is there. So we have to pull that stud also. No worries. Hope that stud is not like corroded into the block. That would be upsetting and a tragedy. Because I'll have to cut it off and extract it. Yeah, I think, I think we got it here. It's turning. Good. Eventually, it's a, it's gonna come out. Eventually. Oh. Come on. Mm, slippages. Almost out. Almost there. Yeah. Okay, that's the stud. So we're gonna leave that stud in that little mount. And yeah, there's another one on the bottom. Ooh. Oh, that's okay. One more. Let's go back down below and get that last one out. Yeah, there it is. There's that. There's that last one. I don't know why they put studs in here instead of just putting in bolts because it's twice as much work. You have to take the nut off and then you have to take the the stud out. And I guess that's okay if you're like assembling it not in the car, but while it's installed in its intended location, it makes it uh, for a difficult uh, removal. And a difficult installation if you lose where all the pieces go, which is very possible, if not probable. Uh, regardless. <laughs> Irregardless? That's not even a real word. Uh, regardless, what we're going to do is we're going to pull this stud out next. Then we're going to take that entire bracket with the stud and the bolt, all three of them, in their respective holes, and we're going to leave them in there for as long as possible. That way uh, we don't lose them because that will create a major malfunction later on during reassembly. But as regardless is already negative, it's a logical absurdity. Yep, it's coming out. It's free. Kinda. 
Here, let's try this from the top. I think there's more space up here than, uh, than there was down there. I think. Okay, stud. And right, maybe it goes out through the bottom. So the one stud comes out from top, and then the rest through the bottom. There we go. Whoa, the whole thing fell down. There we go. Okay. So that goes right there with the rest of its companion components. And then this goes right there. Now we know where all that stuff goes. All right, next up, we're gonna pull the hydraulic tensioner off. It's got one bolt here and one here. There's the uh, hydraulic uh, actuator. We're gonna remove this tensioner and then the pulley's gonna flip flop around. Once the pulley is loose, we can then get the belt off of the rest of the system and then we can pull that idler pulley off up top as well. Now we can do this with confidence because we know that uh, the engine is in time. All the marks are aligned. If it wasn't on number one top dead center, then uh, the marks would not line up with the marks at the crankshaft. We would be one turn off, flashlight. We would be one turn off at the crank and we'd have to roll it over again until everything lined up. But I've already gone ahead and done that. I uh, didn't explain it in great detail and I'm not going to. In the same concept here, I'm gonna keep these fasteners uh, with their associated component. Oh, that's tight. Unclick, please. There we go. Come here. Our tensioner okay let's pull the tensioner off we can see that it's loose but it's still bolted on right here so we're gonna go in that's a 10 millimeter hex and we're gonna pull this guy loose unclick hmm. there we go close that and where'd it go it's a washer I see it very important that that goes back. See that? If we lose that, I'll be in trouble. That washer washer is uh, designed to space this perfectly. Without it, we will not be in the proper alignment. Okay. Come here, Belt. What are you doing? Stuck. Oh, it was stuck in there with that little uh, retainer clip thing. No worries. Okay, let's go up top, fish that belt out the rest of the way. Off the water pump, off the cam, cam gear. That's nice and stable. See that? Now I'm going to make sure I keep note or keep track of the orientation of this belt. I'm holding it up at the top between the cams and I'll just set it down like so. So we've got the front cam, the rear cam, and the crankshaft. See that? We're not putting that back on, but it's good to know where it came from. I'm trying to find something that makes a squealy sound. Yeah, I don't know. These pulleys and everything kind of feel pretty good. We're on the right track with this. That's a lot of work to not solve the sound. But it appeared that that was the uh, most likely cause and that's why we went with what we went with. Yeah, that one feels okay too. But you know, it was intermittent and it was only on cold start. And right now it's, well, it's cold, but it's not started. So we won't know until we know, let us proceed. Okay, we're going in. We're gonna start to uh, remove the water pump. There's one, two, three, 10 mil nuts in there. And then a few 10 mil bolts. We'll get half of it from the bottom, half of it from the top.
unclick. Come on. There. Mm, no. setting all of these aside on the lift arm so uh, they don't get lost in a pile. I did get that one. Man, that was violent. Violence in the workplace. Okay, that's three nuts. Here's one of the bolts. Just punch the fender. Yeah, I can't see anything else. Yeah, there's two more. There's one right here and one I think to the left a little higher up. Let me go up top and get to those guys. You guys stay down here. Okay, here's the upper bolt. There's one. And uh, there's the other one. All right guys, so that's all the bolts out of this. I just counted. We had six total removed, one up here, two, three, four, five, six, not to mention the, the larger ones that pass through that uh, secure uh, the little engine mount thing. So here's the deal. I don't know if I need to pull these covers off to get this pump to come out. And if I have to pull these covers off, that means I also have to pull off these camshaft gears. So that could actually uh, make this a little, a little harder. Or, well, not so much harder, just it's gonna take more time. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to crack this loose and see if it sneaks out through the bottom. Uh, if it's gonna give me, any, give me any fuss, we're just gonna have to uh, go up top again and, uh, and start to work on the, these covers and those cam gears. I don't even know if I can crack this guy loose. I'm sure this pump is full of coolant and uh, it may be in a position to come at me at any second, so... I can't even get it to break loose, really, so we're not, we're not doing anything. Different pry bar. Let's see here. You gonna come out? What is... Why? Yeah, it's in there pretty good. We're about to move on to bigger pry bars. If different pry bar is not gonna not gonna cut it for me. Is this thing glued on or is it corroded on? Oh it's in there, yeah. Yeah, let's try curvy angular pry bar. That'll give you some good leverage on this. Yep. There we go, let it ride. It was stuck. Due to corrosion. Alright, we'll let this drain for a little while. Be right back. Alright, well, here's the deal. It's loose, but it is still captured by those covers. So, next, I'm gonna pull these cam gears and pull these other covers off to, uh, to sneak this, uh, this water pump out of here because it's not coming out like that. So, what we're gonna do. Uh, I wish I'd have known that. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna hit that with a right angle impact. We're gonna hang on to it so it doesn't spin the gear and that thing will come loose and then we can pop these gears off. No big thing. Now it's a big thing. No worries, I have a solution. And that solution is more pry bar. Check it out, see that little bolt down there? That one, I'm just gonna wedge this bar between uh, one of the spokes on this gear and that little bolt, and that's going to uh, retain this gear while I break it loose with a wrench. Or it's gonna slip. Try again.
Get on there. Oh, that's tight. Oh. Seriously? The back side's gonna be fun. <coughs> Dang! <coughs> I need a longer tool. Got one. Okay, here we go. Oh, unclick. There we go. Yeah, that backside's gonna be fun. That cam did turn some, but the marks are still really close, so it can stay right where it is. We'll pull this gear out. We're gonna keep these gears with their uh, respective cylinder banks. So I'm just gonna put that one here and that one back there. It's just gonna stay right over here. Okay, now for that back cam, it's gonna take some wizardry. Uh, the, one of the bolts is right here. Now I've already, I turned that cam and it went back, uh, retarded ever so slightly. So basically the mark is now that way, like 20 degrees or so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this back to where it's kind of supposed to be. And we're gonna fit a socket over that 10 millimeter bolt. A few moments later. Now there is a special tool designed to hold these, uh, uh, these cam gears into place and I don't have it. So I, I made one. I took some bolts and, uh, and a welder and a pry bar, an angular pry bar, and I made a holding device that will hang on to that, uh, that sprocket and it's gonna allow me to place that um, crank down there. That way I can get a wrench on that and, uh, and get a good turn. So it should work unless I, my welds are terrible, which they usually are, but it should work. All I needed to do was hang on to that so I can break this thing loose. So let's see if this is gonna work out or not. And I hope it does, because it took me like a half hour to find all those little pieces and kind of put them in place and see if they were gonna work. Then I had to trim them off because I couldn't fit a, my ratchet onto the fastener. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. All right, well, so far, that's holding. Now, I just need to be able to apply the appropriate torque here to get this guy to break loose. Oh. Let's try uh, moving this up a little higher. Put it over here. And I can kind of push against it a little bit better. So here we go. It's gonna work or it's not. The light just went out. You. Wow. Okay, breaker bar. Well, now we find out if uh, those welds are any good or not, because, or this ratchet for that matter. Unclick these. It's loose. That was it, it came loose. Oh, that's gorgeous. Ingenuity. Save this for later. That goes into my custom tool section. I must say I think this was a little tighter than it was supposed to have been. I don't think it was uh, supposed to have been that hard. That thing was on there. Oh, that belt material. See that? That's nasty. Okay, set that pulley aside. Now I can get these 10 mil bolts out of this cover and pop this thing off. Okay, let's zip through this real quick and get all these guys out of here. We are very behind schedule. I have to pull that pulley off also. I forgot about that. What's that thing take? A 14 maybe? Let's find out. 
one click. Yeah, I think this thing bolts onto like a an aluminum flange on the other side of this, uh, this little cover thing right here. We're gonna find out. Yeah, yeah, there's aluminum. Okay, so it does not bolt to the cover. This is good. Okay, a few more 10 millis. I'm back here. Another one. And that's uh, that's her cover. Come out. Leaves. And now we can pull this water pump. There we go. See, nice and easy. Look at that. Super simple. All right, guys. I think we're good here. On that note, now that we have uh, fully reached the position of disassembled here, I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. I'm all done. It's end of day. That was enough uphill battle for me. So uh, that being said, as always, like thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you know the drill. Let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. Again, if you missed part one, just check the links down in this video's description. And of course, I eagerly await to see you on part three when I put this water pump together, retime this engine, perform final assembly, and then, uh, and then get this thing on the road again. So until part three, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of hybrid Toyota Lexus.